Hey, welcome to another Flare Corp Media mountain climb preparation video. Uh, it is definitely August out. You can hear all the cicadas and God, do I hate them. Did you know cicadas actually bury themselves in the ground for like 14 years while they grow, only to come out and emerge and be super loud and annoying? I'm sure they have a purpose in the food chain somehow, but I really don't care for them. Anyway, this is a quick video about a dehydrated ground beef recipe that I made. I mentioned it, mentioned it in the last food preparation video. And so it just shows you the recipe at the end. I have it written down or in the description, I have it written down as well. And then now that the preparation videos are done, I'm going to start editing the actual mountain trip. And you're going to want to stick around to the end because you're actually going to be able to see the first sneak peek at some of the footage from the trip at the end. I know some of you may not be interested in the mountain climbing. You want the tech stuff or the travel vlog stuff. So while I'm working on this, uh, mountain climbing video because I've been working on this or taking video and preparing for nine, 10 months. It's one of the most ambitious things I've ever tried. So I'm editing it because I wanna make sure I do it right. I'm also going to put out a tech video and I realized I never actually put out the final video of the South Dakota travel vlog. <laughs> kind of slipped my mind. So I'm going to get that out and then I may put another travel vlog out as well. So if you wanna make sure you see those, uh, hit the subscribe button. And then, like I said, stick around to see the first footage from the actual mountain trip. Now I am 100% stealing this ground beef recipe from Dixie on her YouTube channel, Homemade Wanderlust. She focuses mostly on through hiking, backpacking trips. Uh, so these are like long six month, eight, eight month stretch backpacking trips, uh, like the Continental Divide Trail, the Pacific Crush Trail, and the Appalachian Trail. It's a great channel, she has lots of good advice and I've been watching a lot of it and trying to incorporate it into my own uh, backpacking and mountain climbing endeavors. So she put this recipe up there and I'm just relaying it to you. I haven't tried it myself, so I will let you know how it uh, rehydrates during my trip or after my trip. So uh, stick around for that. But this recipe for ground beef that doesn't taste like gravel, according to her, is you need to use 93% lean beef. The oil and grease is what makes the ground beef taste kind of rancid. Uh, you want, we're going to try and get rid of as much of that as we can and just leave the beef. So one pound, and then we're also going to use half a cup per one pound of breadcrumbs. Uh, these are, these are gluten-free breadcrumbs because I had a gluten-free guest over. Uh, so they're what I have laying around, but you can use any normal breadcrumbs you want. So we're going to get our half a cup ready. And the reason we're using breadcrumbs is these will help when we're rehydrating the meat. The water is going to get absorbed into the breadcrumbs that is mixed in with the beef and it's going to help it seem juicier and fluffier. So we'll just take those breadcrumbs right in there. I'm going to add some pepper to it right now so that way I don't have to worry about seasoning it out on the campgrounds. I'm also gonna add just a dash of salt in there as well, but I want to make sure I leave myself the option to season it the way I want uh, in terms of salt, or I might put in like Lowry seasoning salt or something like that. So now you just get to work it like you're making meatloaf. Just minus the egg and, and tomato bits and work this as much as you can here, break up those fibers. And when we're cooking it, and even after we're cooking it, we're going to continue to try and break down the chunks as much as we can because it's going to make it harder to dehydrate it successfully. We want it to be as tiny of bits of pieces as possible. So I've got all the breadcrumbs incorporated. So we'll just put that in the cast iron and get rid of these and wash your hands. All right, so now we're just going to cook it down and like I said, try to break up as many pieces as we can. Didn't add any oil to this because we're going to be trying to get out as much oil as we can anyway. So you might notice I'm futzing quite a bit with it. Normally I don't play with my ground beef this much. I just let it cook more, but I'm trying to keep breaking it down while it's cooking. Not only that, because we went with the 93% lean, uh, there's not a whole lot of oil in there, and so it's going to have a tendency to 
adhere to the pan a little bit more. So by continuing to move it around, I'm trying to prevent some of the stickage so I don't have to clean quite as much. Now I'm going to rinse this out in hot water just to try and pull more grease off. More water, that'll just evaporate away, but that grease isn't going to dehydrate very well. So I'm going to take it over to the sink. You got a part in the mess. This is all camping food back here that I've been stockpiling. So I'm going to add a little water to help loosen it up. Now one pro tip to get this crusted on meat that's stuck on your pan off, uh, you could scrub it with paper towel and salt, which is my go-to for scrubbing things off. But when it's this caked on, um, a properly seasoned pan you can put water on. So we're going to just fill it up with some water and then we're going to boil the hell out of it. And that boiling process is actually going to loosen all of that stuff up. So now we'll first rinse it with some hot water and the hot water will help kind of loosen up that oil. And then we're going to hit it with some cold water so that we can go in there with our hands and break it up some more because I have wimpy hands. So any of these big chunks like that we want to break up even further if we can. Try not to lose too much of it. That looks like pretty good consistency there. Just a couple big chunks, but as I keep messing around with it, I'll try to break them up a little bit more. So now I'm just blotting it with a paper towel to try and get just a little moisture out, so that way when I pour it on the trays, uh, tons of water doesn't come out. Of course, it's going on the floor instead, but that's the sacrifice for videoing. I have to squat because this is a weird angle. Basically, I'm going to put all the meat on one tray, but then use the other trays to catch any of the little pieces that may fall through. And this has kind of a little reservoir to catch anything anyway, so we should be okay on that. You're going to want to set this to 145 degrees, which looks to be about right there. So now let's load up a tray. A little bit fell through, but yeah, it looks like my plan is working, but actually to help dehydrate a little faster, I'm gonna spread this onto two trays. Okay, now I just fit the lid on the tall way. All that goes on there. So this is going to take about six hours. Along the way, we're gonna come and give it a little stir to make sure that all the pieces are properly exposed to the air. See you in six hours. It's about midway through here. I'm just coming and breaking up some of these little pieces. See, this stuff is getting pretty dried out. The top one, most of it's still moist, so this bottom one is about half dry. So it may end up taking slightly longer than six hours, but I will let you know. Voice over Jason here, because I forgot to turn on my microphone. Anyway, uh, what I'm doing here is just saying that it finished. I think it took about seven hours, uh, so a little longer than needed. Actually, I may have fallen asleep and let it go a little longer. Uh, but anyway, you can see it's all dehydrated, even some of these bigger chunks here. Didn't quite get those broken up, but for the most part, it's small pieces. And then I'm just kind of showing how much fell through. Uh, so just giving it a try. I know it's not going to taste good, but basically it tastes pretty much like breadcrumbs. Uh, not a whole lot of flavor otherwise. So that's a good thing because we were trying to make sure it didn't taste rancid or anything like that. So it'll be ready to mix into something. So let's uh, test it out on the trail next. All right, so this is the ground beef, part of the ground beef recipe that I made. Uh, I mixed it in with, I thought it was a soup packet, like dehydrated soup mix or gumbo mix, but it was salsa. So I just took about half a pound of hamburger, uh, that recipe I made, and mixed it in with the salsa and made kind of a gumbo. So if Seth will be so kind as to point that at me and I can let you know if indeed the beef tastes good. Ooh. 
Mm. It needs to sit a little bit longer to keep rehydrating, but it's good. Yeah, that breadcrumb is really absorbing some of the water and kind of reconstituting the meat. So definitely give that recipe a try and thank you to Homemade Wanderlust for the recipe. Well, that's going to do it for this final mountain preparation video. I'm going to get started editing the actual trip. Uh, I have kind of a documentary style I'm going for, so it might take me a little bit of time here. But uh, while I'm working on that, I'm going to try and get a tech video and a travel vlog out as well. Because uh, since I have a variety of things on this channel, we'll make sure that there's something new for each type of fan base. So if you don't want to miss out when I upload a new video or when this mountain climbing trip actually comes out, go ahead and subscribe and then click the bell icon so you get notified when I upload a new video. And if you appreciated this video, uh, one, go check out Dixie's video, which uh, or channel, which I have linked in the description down below, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm doing what I love. Keep doing what you love. Thanks for watching.